we're joined by John Banshaf. He's a law professor at George Washington University. He's joining us from Florida. Uh, John, when I spoke to you last, uh, this was the original travel ban. It was being argued before the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. You said at that time, if things did not go the administration's way, you said the Trump administration would be smart not to take it to the Supreme Court. Apparently, they were watching you. They, they apparently are not going to do that. They're going to try a second time around. Is it a good idea? They're trying a second time around. They've eliminated many of the problems that the six judges who looked at this case have, have brought up. But uh, they haven't made it bulletproof yet for a very simple reason. It still applies only to seven Muslim countries. All of the judges said, well, that looks like a Muslim ban. Why are you including only Muslim countries? And so what I'm suggesting is very simple. Why don't you add a few non-Muslim countries, take that argument out from the play? You could add North Korea, for example. You could add some of the war-torn countries in uh, Africa where the same problems occur. You can't identify people. You can't vet people. But once you add two or three more countries, that completely undercuts one of the major arguments that was made before the Court of Appeals and the lower courts, that this is really an anti-Muslim ban. It's discrimination based upon religion. They're saying it's going to be a tighter, more streamlined uh, plan. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it means, first of all, that they are exempting green card holders, people who are permanent residents in the U.S. They seem to be exempting people who are here lawfully, temporarily, for example, students on visas. They are not including a total ban on uh, Syrians, and they've made some other simplifications so that people are literally, unlike last time, not going to be caught in mid-flight flying over the Atlantic and suddenly find out, whoops, you can't come in. But it still targets those same seven countries, and that's going to be a problem. You know, as a lawyer, whenever a judge says to me, well, Professor Vance, have, you know, if only you said this, it, it might make your case stronger, I do it, even though I might think I have a strong case. Here, I hope this is not a fatal flaw because this is going to determine the power of the president to restrict uh, immigration over the next four, maybe eight years of his term in office. John, uh, put yourself in the shoes of the other side. Uh, what do they do right now? What are they doing to try and counter this even before it comes out? Well, I'm sure they're doing a lot of research. Uh, the law schools are gearing up to assist. Organizations are being formed. They're taking many of the arguments that they used before, trying to see which ones what might still have some application here. And, of course, they're going to be contesting individual, individual uh, deportations or detentions. But in terms of the overall issue, I think they're going to have a big problem because today in the United States Supreme Court, in an argument in a completely different case, the justices, the majority of the justices, in fact, all of them, strongly suggested that constitutional law, the protections of the Constitution, particularly against things like discrimination, do not apply outside our borders. So somebody who's sitting in Yemen today in a hut and deciding he might like to come to the U.S., justices are likely to say, based on today's case, I'm sorry, sir, you don't have any legal rights. We can discriminate if we want on the basis of religion, or ethnicity, or anything else. So I think what I'm hearing from you is you feel like the executive order was constitutional. I think the original one had constitutional parts, but again, by overreaching, by applying to people who had been living in this country for 20 years, almost certainly would be subject to constitutional challenge. By stripping it down, making a bare-bones one, making it apply only to people who have never been to this country, who are sitting in these seven foreign countries and saying, basically, I wish I could come to the U.S. No, sir. You don't have any right under our Constitution to come to the U.S. or to be free from a decision based even upon things like religion or ethnicity. John Spanshaf, uh, joining us from Florida. Thanks so much.